Uh, uh, okay, if I'm okay, in Karl Marx. I don't I don't get it, dude, I'm sorry. Normal. You mean not easy. Normal. Normal's easy. Wait, what now? What's going on? Ground zero. Normal is like real easy. You don't know who uh, Karl Marx is? Oh, Karl Marx? Yeah, I know Karl Marx. Yeah, I think the thing is, like, you gotta spell it out for it to work. Yeah, that's what I'm guessing, but uh, just every time I saw Marx, it's like, oh, come on, you fuckers, you couldn't be a little more subtle about it? Yeah, I don't know. It, like, there's times where, like, shit is just so heavy-handed. And, and again, that that's the thing, is... A home front is not subtle. It's not. At all. There's not cool little fucking things that they fucking do Over that down. build a bigger Over atmosphere down. than what you see, or anything like that. New Order does a really good job with that, actually. Especially with the fucking dialogue from, like, people that you'll hear in environments if you actually just sit around and listen, like Lazy have been doing. Oh, I, I love it. Um, I, I make an intentional uh, effort to show off the uh, sentry cannons being 20mm cannons. Yeah, that's awesome. And I show off the black guy before he gets shot, or after he supposedly gets shot, and you can't see any kind of damage on him. Yeah, that's the thing that's been very nagging me. Like, for a lot of, like, newer generation FPSs or anything like that, there is no model deformation. There is no, like, impact. Like, they don't show, like, gaping wounds or anything. I mean, which would suck. It would be kind of horrifying, but that's kind of the point. A, a Keeper got in. No, there's not. It's a plot point that he's wounded, and it would have been really cool if you could have always really seen the blood as a bit of foreshadowing. Yeah, like that's the thing. It's like there was like a whole bunch of blood, and like they had like it was running down his arm or something, and just dribbling and leaving trails behind him. Wait, what are you talking about now? Stuff like how it could have done things. Um, I mean, but the problem is like, don't be wrong. Like I understand like vilifying like an enemy character or whatever the fuck in the game because you know, dehumanizes them it's a common tactic in action too. If you dehumanize them, it's easier to shoot them in the face uh, and kill a whole bunch of them. But like Nazis, okay, Nazis are assholes. We, we fuck Nazis. North Koreans, we don't really give a shit. So like when they like they make them out to try and make them like the new Nazis, it's like that doesn't really work. I don't know, it's just stupid. You guys do know that my original intent for this was to translate all of the Korean and Chinese and just dub it over as poor as the rest of the game was handled. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> and it was just more work than it was worth. Yeah, that, that would be a lot more work than it is worth. And like, that's the thing though, is I think you could use that and like, you could take something really terrible and make it interesting. Like, you could also, potentially, you could go into, you could kind of do like the, the research indicates style of info dump, where you just talk about how fucking messed up like the game development was, or like how, how, how what it did, how, how did it come to be with the fucking steaming pile of shit it is now. Episode 4 is definitely just strange love talking about the alpha process. Nice. Um, nice. I that was the, originally when I was gonna have a rotating cast uh, guest commentators that was slated for Doctor Strange of because it's the uh, survivalist game which is long, boring, and stupid. So uh, the original idea was to let him have at it for the Alpha talk, and then he became a regular commentator. Nice. So it was just you know he's still gonna have that as a dedicated episode basically, but. Uh, i tell you what my intro video is going to be, how I was planning on doing the intro video. Now tell us. I'd like to know. Uh, you know, uh, like Voidburger did some of the newer Silent Hill games. She talks about... I remember watching the Wii version of Silent Hill and how terrible it was. Yeah, well, yeah, well you know how she did the intro where she kind of spliced other things in and talked about why certain things didn't work? Yeah, and that's like that makes things interesting. I like how much you be doing that and I'm gonna be showing games that did it better. Like this trailer here. Which uh you may or may not recognize. That's some old school shit right here. Um, I'm gonna talk about how other games have done the invasion of US better. Take that. Take a look at this intro video. This no, check out this video. This is actually really well done, I think. What the fuck? Yeah, it's got the scan lines and everything. This one right here. Where's that fucking uh APC come from? 
<laughs> it's like, it looks like it's climbing vertically from the water. This is World in Conflict. Well, I guess you have You notice how the enemy is presented as confident and dangerous? Yeah, so yeah it's not dangerous, or not like, not like, just yeah. like a map. No, and one thing I really like about World in Conflict is they don't invade America as part of some grand plan. They invade America to try and force America out. And because they're always on the track of the American forces. So, Which makes a lot more fucking sense than to try and take it over some piece of territory. Right, you end up with a very intelligent plot with intelligent enemies. Yeah, which yeah. I guess more like they have like realistic goals. Well, that's why I want to go over the world of conflict in at least in passing where it's not a heavy I hope so! Yeah, and that's something I really like about World Conflict, as it doesn't beat you on that short. Because you... Go! Yeah, and, and have you played it? I have never played it, no. Uh, early on in the game, you know, one of your co-commanders is the Abrams commander, the commander, and he's presented as a fucking idiot. Yeah, that happens. And as you go through it, you, uh... You find out that he was responsible for raising my borderline war crime. He opened up fire on civilians thinking they were uh, Soviet troops or uh, doing something. And so he's pulled from the front lines, and that's why he's hanging out with Parker, the National Guardsman. Which is another interesting point, is that you're playing National Guard, which is why you don't have all the toys you should. Yeah, and I kind of like... I, I like setups like that, this that make that more sense, going. where it's like, guess what, you're not a tier 1 operating yeah. motherfucker, you we do not it, have all of this really cool shit, you're a rear echelon grunt fuck. So, and, it, yeah. it, it works really well, because like, you do missions like trying to help evac civilians, and all the bridge bitch. while civilians are treating, you have to go rescue your general's talking. family because they were in the area to, you know, shit that actually makes sense. Like I said, where you're trying to secure a retreat for civilians in the area. Yeah, you're basically damage control. And, you know, that entire mission, you get to call in uh, local air bases, uh, A-10s and shit. You just right, utterly annihilate the Russians with the A-10s. But it's still a tight fight because they're coming at you from all directions and the A-10s can't stay on station the entire time. Um, so it, it's a really good mission. And so you're saying it can actually be like Intense atmosphere and actually has fun gameplay? Yes, a World in Conflict is a legit good single player campaign. But as the campaign goes on, you're bleeding troops and you're literally fighting with fewer and fewer guys on a lot of the missions and you have to kind of call in reinforcements to get anything doing. And, uh. Actually, one of my favorite ones is Mission 2 or 3. Uh, 3. Uh, you. The general, yourself, uh, the, the infantry commander, the armor commander, and one other guy are talking. Uh, one of the medics are uh, standing over some b battle plans, and a sniper opens fire, and everybody kind of takes cover, but nobody really panics. And uh, as they're taking cover, the sniper pops another shot at the general, and he goes, Ah, somebody take care of that fucking sniper, or something like that. Nice. And when you blow up the building, um, he comes on the radio and goes, Hey, you know, good job getting that motherfucker kind of thing. You know, that kind of attitude. And he goes, uh, You just thought you needed to know that so-and-so didn't make it. So, you know, it, it builds an actual... You start liking a lot of the characters because they're actually talking to you and they... They're acknowledging you and you're not just some fucking... Again, fucking steroided up fucking Your kill everybody song. grunt. Right, and, and you know, I, I like when the you general run, sounds dis uh, disappointed when you lose a unit. You no, know, they've killed executed. one of your units. Hey, and you know, another one of our units is gone. You know, he, he never calls others. you a moron, but you can tell that he's not happy that, that you're losing troops. That murders the innocent. Yeah, and I kind of like that because that like reinforces a, a state of mind you when you're playing the game. Your um, but as the missions the go on, you fight more and more desperate things, and you realize that the Russians are attacking. Uh, military base where you're the Americans are supposedly developing a super uh, a secret weapon. It's supposed to be like a new breed of nuke or something like that. I don't remember what it was anymore. So the Russians are trying to take it and it's a bluff. The Americans have nothing there and if the Russians find out they'll be able to engage more troops in the area. 
because the Russians are being cautious in case you pull out the super weapon, so you have to make a desperate last stand to try and hold shit off. And you end up holding off uh, the final stand in the American campaign. Um, you're fighting over a town, you know, and your center point's actually a high school. And as you fight through it, you know, he has you retreating and pulling into positions and baiting the enemy in so he can go on a B-52 strike. And he's like, yeah, I pulled all sorts of strings to get this shit called in. I hope you guys are happy. But, uh, there's an interesting moment in the mission where you, uh, you're still getting overrun because you see more and more troops starting to pour in and you call it a nuke on an American town. That's not pleasant. No, and it's not a happy situation. Um, as the campaign goes on, you find out the dank commander is incompetent, but not a terrible person. He's just really fucked up. And they actually build him up pretty well, which is a nice touch. Like, at one point, it shows each character kind of talking about home, so you see the medic playing with a troll doll and talking about his daughter and shit like that. And uh, his is he calls home and uh, his stepfather berates him, and his mother doesn't even talk to him. And he sort of realizes he's really fucked up in the head. That's fucked. But uh, he volunteers, uh, he and his tank crew volunteer to stay behind to make sure the Russians don't realize there's uh, something big coming in. So you end up nuking part of your own forces, too. See, that, that's the thing, though. Like, that's that's a good way to, like, develop a character to, like, show, like, he has something that he wants to, like, redeem himself for, and he actually has depth, and he has more than just the superficial one-note bullshit that we see in stuff like, uh, Homefront. Most video games, yeah. Like, that, that's one of the few things that I can, I can say is probably legit complaint I have about the new order, Wolfenstein the new order, is that they did not have enough time to develop the characters more. They, you still get a good feeling for them, and you do have compassion towards them, but at the same time, they needed a little bit more, and it just wasn't there, unfortunately. Oh yeah, and it's still really fucking good. It has like some of the best gunplay and just overall gameplay I have seen in an FPS in years. New World Order you talking about? Yeah, the New Order. Uh, technically, except you never fight on American soil. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's happened. So. Yeah, it, it, yeah, there are Nazis in the states. The uh, the one-liners are kind of pretty awesome. I, I kind of like "Wake up, you're dead." <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's still my favorite. And fucking Lazy Fire had no reaction to it. I'm like, dude, that is fucked. That's like the best one. <laughs> yeah. It's just the way the guy says it. He's like, "Wake up, you're dead." And he says it in a whispered tone too. He's like, "Wake up, you're dead." I fucking busted out laughing when he fucking said that. I was like, "Oh no, come on!" Yeah, well, you get the, you get the feeling that Blaskowitz really doesn't like Nazis, and I can't blame him. Kerberos serves the Latin mission I was talking about. Uh, I, I will have a look here. The uh, I because I actually played through the game twice just to see uh, what would be different between, you know, saving, um, shit, now I can't even remember the names, the, the old guy or the young guy in that, you know, first part, and the cutscene with Jimi Hendrix was fucking amazing, I was like, wow, yeah, there's some, there's some really good fucking shit in, in Wolfenstein, it, it just overall is a really good game. Man, sorry. Again, it just kind of bums me out though, because like there's so much great shit. It feels like Lazy Fire is not taking advantage of it yet. It's like, God damn it, Lazy Fire, stop doing fucking, you know, live commentary. Fuck. Because was actually like I was about to just say, and I completely forgot what the fuck it was. Oh well. I don't know what the hell this player's recording. This is kind of weird because I remember this mission actually requiring you to move around troops and do shit. Because at one point, uh, you find out there is a Soviet recon coming in, and you have to go and engage, uh, take them out before they return back, uh, you know, complete their sweep. Oh, there we go. The what? Thank you.
they change? Uh, they actually change per mission. Uh, they did. They just kind of say like, oh, oh, this guy was, you know, or, or guard number two, or spy, spy, whatever was this voiced by this guy. But they're basically saying you can actually skip them, and it, it'll bring you to the next cutscene, I think. Like once you see one. Oh. Um, but Ground Zeroes, uh, I still haven't gotten to the extra missions yet, because I have to click and get S- No, I have to click, click all the XOF badges. Oh, have you collected the, the first one yet? Probably not. I gotta go get them. Oh, no shit! This is just my first. Yeah, you can actually see the Russian oh. badgers flying oh. in and airdropping shit in. Oh, yeah, okay. I was looking at that, I was like, that's fucking crazy. What you want to do is lay on the floor and just roll around a bunch. Do that. Sounds very Metal Gear. Do it. Do it. You'll you'll not be disappointed about that one. That was basically, you know, running around on normal, easy, you know, and so killing this, everything. This is the easy part of the battle. mission. I don't mind. And I gotta admit, this, like, as even as a short first mission it is, it's way better than any mission in Battlefield uh, 3. I'm, I'm not... Used to how soldiers see you in this one because they they actually have a good field of vision, not like uh, um, we hear our orders delivered you know, by proxy. soldier type or whatever the fuck, where they're just blind as fuck. Well, I mean, since the area Except is so much you, bigger and you're not playing, you met with him face to face in order to contact Big lines, Boss. It makes sense for the vision to be Yeah, Tell that that's what that's what got me in trouble because I was trying I was like. Trying to like fuck with them like I would, you know, three, Where two, and zero? one. And then it's like, let me just sneak around I here. Oh no shit, I caught, I got caught, fuck. Where I was born, the language I speak. I've never had the freedom to choose for myself. Yeah, is talking. But you. But yeah, uh, once you get a chance in the first mission, just, just start rolling down, rolling around a lot. This until you get the cutscene. And then you're welcome. Will you really kill Zero for me? Not I kind of want to install Sin episodes just to see how long it was. Uh, let me see. I think it's only like three hours. Zero is. Oh, that was before they started tracking time. It was a lot longer for me because I fucked up my game like before they patched the uh, difficulty shit down uh, yeah because I, mean, uh, I remember playing it when it fir i first got it when it first came out and i yeah. was like oh the fetish models are in here with the latex okay i'm down with this no and but then, the, 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 the 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 bug with the difficulty where it ramped it up to the maximum and never toned it down that's funny i like that I actually beat it that way, it just took me a really long time because he would pop your face out and just get blasted. Well that's the thing, it's like I, I must admit I remember nothing about Sin Episodes Emergence. It was very forgettable. That's kind of the problem, and that's kind of why I think it needs an LP done of it. Even actually, if it's like I, a short interlude. There Sin was one, it was uh, done by Blister. I remember the best part was the ending. Don't you die on me, damn it! Here. He be dropping! Intubate, now! So, step out of me. Clear! This mission actually ramps it all up for you, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This it's is, pretty silly. This is definitely full motion. So this is just like buy the full game kind of thing that you'd see at the end of any demo, except this one they charge for. Hey, oh, you, you, you can hear the commander every once in a while. Hey, another unit's killed. I know. 
it, 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 it was kind of more of a a, uh, a test to see if Metal Gear 5 would actually work on PCs, and it actually really does. It's, What is this? Body I've lost. Call of Duty collect Stop Definitive it. Collection. Four hundred dollars. Why would you do this? Apparently, <laughs> all ten Call of Duty games for four hundred bucks. Wow, what a deal! Oh no, it's Call of Duty and all the DLC. Well, here's the thing, okay, which is really games, infuriating to me. E. That's not really worth it. I mean, well... Woohoo, I got an SMG. Like, here's the thing. The problem I have with that shit is that... Yes, the like, launcher. ...is that Modern Warfare is still a 20 bucks. Chico's tape. Hard difficulty, finally. Like, I love me Modern Warfare, but it's still 20 fucking bucks. Okay, I got the Renegade Threat. Operative rescue. I'm sorry, it's fifteen dollars right now. Classified. Wait, what is fifteen bucks? Call of Duty. Uh, Modern Warfare. One. Yeah. No, well, the well, Modern Warfare, which is Call of Duty Four. Y yeah, Modern Warfare One. I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, Modern bucks? Warfare. I mean. Yeah, it's only fifteen. Like five bucks before. That's I don't know. I I've more. never seen it less than twenty bucks. No, no, it's it's been on sale. Modern Warfare really? One okay. has been on sale. it's it's been seven fifty. It's been probably five bucks. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because that's like my favorite game I mean, out Modern of the War entire series. Modern Warfare 2 was 5 bucks on Amazon. Yeah, so, but nobody wants Modern Warfare 2. I bought it when it was 5 bucks on Amazon, because I'm like, yeah. like, well, I boycotted it for this long. I'll just get it on Amazon for 5 bucks, and we played a few rounds, and I was okay. I, I might have actually caved and bought it at the launch. I bought it soon after launch. Oh, what, um, did stop? Why did I hit enter? So yeah, there's the other video. I'm going to be doing uh, the intro to uh, op Operation Flashpoint in a pro uh, show where they stole their idea for the intro for Homefront. And I'm going to do uh, the World in Conflict for uh, showing how to do the intro properly. And yeah, like kinda... this. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. I'm just going to kind of talk about how, where I think they fucked up and what they could have done to improve it. It's just, or kind of the fucked up process behind making the game, what changed, what was wrong with it. Yeah, because a, a lot of times with games this bad, I think that's more entertaining, is to talk about why it's fucked up, and how it got to that point. Like, um, who here played Modern Warfare, uh, I'm sorry, Call of Duty, no, sorry, Medal of Honor, um, Allied Assault? I did. Uh, I loved Allied Assault. Art of Knights was great. Well, I'm just sniper down. Well, okay, wait, which one oh, am I thinking? No, no, I'm thinking wait, is Allied, Ass wait, is Allied Assault... I'm sorry, Allied Assault's not the fucking Pacific Theater. What the fuck's a Pacific Theater? One? Rising uh, Storm, uh, Rising Sun. That's That was the PS2 version. I'm yeah, talking about right, the PC. Uh, Pacific Assault. Thank you, that was Pacific Assault. That Pacific game... Assault was pretty good. Uh, the combat in it is fucking terrible. Yeah. Absolutely fucking terrible. And the level design is awful, too. Yeah, like, cool. you have... I mean, seriously, motherfuckers beat bullet sponges, and you're using bolt-action rifles through most of the fucking game. When you gotta shoot them twice, it gets a little tedious. I know, because I played through it a while back. I, I didn't find that egregious, but... Uh, I, I thought it was I like a little bit. the squad thing, and the fact that you could get shot and be down, but as long yes. as your medic could pathfind to you, you'd be okay, which, of course, led to some hilarious consequences. Yes. Your medic could uh, not pathfind to you. Yeah, that was kind of terrible. But over the here, one thing was a guy... I'm, I'm yeah. right here, it's, it's, it's five meters, come on. come on. Yeah, come on, Doc, get your ass over here. Like, that's the thing, though, is, like, I found... The game, like overall, it's got really good points to it. It's it's fairly historical. It it does detail some of like the more important shit that happened around this time frame. But it's just like a lot of the normal gameplay is boring as shit to me, which is sad because I fucking love like I was I was a marine, so it's like I fucking love like the Pacific type shit. I think it's great, but it's just terrible. Uh, I love the Allied Assault, uh, the mission where you land in Holland and your buddy dies right at the beginning because he's stuck on the fucking. And that's kind of an interesting way to start that mission out. Yeah, but that's just aping something that happened in the longest day. It is, well, but... Everything I, about those games is aping stuff that happened. Yeah, because those movies are great. Speaking but of... I really Honor. liked uh, Arnhem Knights, the one where you're fighting through with the British, through uh, Arnhem for Operation Market Garden. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And 
it, years later, I still remember the soundtrack because they, the sound design on that level is really, really well thought out. We get a Medal of Honor. Um, which one was the latest one that came out? Uh, Underground. Wait, no. The latest Medal. Uh, you mean the Afghanistan ones? Yeah, the tier. Okay. And that one, that was the first time I've actually seen friendly AI, you know, mop up enemies for you. Because I actually fucked off into a cave somewhere to, like, pick up a gun. And it was just, it, it, all of a sudden it just said, objective complete. I was like, wait, what? I didn't do um, anything. Bad Company 2's AI is actually really solid about killing shit. Yeah, oh. that's, I like it when AI is, like, Effective and like, unfortunately, that's another th another nail in the fucking coffin for Pacific Assault. Is the it, like the team AI is terrible. Oh yeah. You'll see me in by episode three. I'm showing off how bad the AI is in uh, Homefront. By the way, um, no, in Bad Company two, I, I, for episode four, there's a sniper segment which is really pandering and really bad and really boring. So it's kind yeah. of like Medal of Honor Warfighters fucking yeah. Skype segments. No, because it's the one where you have to sit up on top of a tower and you're like, okay, we're gonna move forward. Oh Finish god, you. that one. Yeah, oh my fucking Christ, I so hate that one so much. There's No, 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 that's the Bad Company 2 one, and the Bad Company oh. 2 one takes about 30 seconds, and it's actually pretty good because of that. Wait, no, what did, another game did, like, wait for the Bad too, right? At least, at least uh, two Sniper Elite did it too, but... Sniper Elite's um, pretty good. I reinstalled uh, Bad Company 2 and actually went and recorded that part of the mission and I'm going to slap it into the uh, episode <laughs> to show a better version of how to do that mission. Or or anything, like seriously, do the sniper missions from fucking Modern Warfare 1. I was actually really yeah, tempted to yeah. get that one too, but... Because that is like, that's like one of the best fucking levels, dude. Yeah, the, and the sad thing is they've just become parodies of that game these days, it's ridiculous. The problem is, is that that mission was designed around that, and it's snappy. It's not. Bad Company Two does it well as well because it does it, it gets it done and out of the way. And Haggard's actually kind of a funny character uh, when he's spotting targets for you. Yeah, um, I, I I like the I like the the fucking personalities from Bad Company and Bad Company Two. That's another thing I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be showing cl uh, clips of your four man squad from uh, Homefront and your four man squad from Bad Company. I, I love the dialogue between the guys in Bad Company 2, like, deep. Oh, man. <laughs> talking about the deep. <laughs> My favorite's the uh, one where they're talking about Predator. Oh, yeah, Predator, that's a good one, too. I was, I was tempted to pick up Bad Company 1 on a console, just so I could, you know, see how it was, but then I found out it was not as good as 2. Bad one Company 2 is, is better. Even though I never played the first one, I just, I know it's better. It can't be any worse or better. One's still pretty fun, but two's got a better dialogue for the most part. Yeah, that's what I've been Though in one, there is a great line where uh, Haggard's like, Hey, new guy, can I borrow a dollar or five bucks? And so he goes, Why the fuck do you need five dollars? He goes, I figure if I ask for uh, every new guy we get in the squad for five bucks, I'll end up uh, with a thousand dollars by the end of it after ten of them. And he goes, Haggard, you can use that money to buy yourself some training, uh, schooling in math. <laughs> 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 Um, in that same mission later on, he goes, Hey, new guy, you get to control the artillery. They won't let me, uh, they're gonna put me in prison if I fire or accidentally hit team uh, our own side again or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah, again, like, it, it lends personality to them. They actually are funny characters, and it's, again, I like that. It's, it's, a, it's not, like, the greatest fucking game. The single player is kind of meh, but overall, it's just, it's made better by your squad mates. The problem is, is that BC2's writing, the characters talk to each other like real people, for the most part. Yes. That's where it really excels. Yes, and that's one of the reasons why I like it. Like, maybe one of the reasons I am the way I am is because, you know, the deet! I like, uh, the, one of the better conversations in that game is, uh, Sweet Murder goes, Are they wearing cowboy hats? The cowboys don't fight anymore, that's stupid. And Hagger goes... Well, God willing, they fight every Sunday and sometimes Monday. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's wonderful. Or a hacker talking about how he knows Spanglish and can order off a Taco Bell menu. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a good one, too. Um, so I'm going to be going over the difference, of, you know, how bad your squad is compared to Bad Company 2, the mission for Bad Company 2. I'm going to talk about how World in Conflict does the Invasion USA better. 
And realistically, so does uh, Bad Company 2 again. Yeah. Because them invading through Alaska and South America makes a hell of a lot more sense than those games make. Yes. I mean, like, that, well, that's what's the thing is, like, in, even in Fallout fucking 3, the goddamn Chinese invade through Alaska. They, they fucking fight in Anchorage. It's like that <laughs> makes more fucking sense to I go up there. I actually never got to go through there. That, that DLC is actually pretty boring. It is, unfortunately. Um, that was one of the few things I really wanted to do in that one, and just, it, it, it's like a Cosmo, uh, like, like a miniature version of all the Fallout 3's problems rolled into one. Ooh, fuck. It takes yeah, itself yeah. too serious. It, it's a mixture of taking itself too seriously and being too tongue in cheek at the same time. It, that, it never quite settles on the right tone. You don't really get anything unique out of it. Nothing's really challenging in it. Yeah. Let's put it this way: as much as I like Fallout Three, there is a lot of flaws with it. Mostly, I can't, stand, I can't stand Three. Ve New Vegas is the one I like. Oh yeah, New Vegas is much is far superior to Three. But that's because Three was trying too fucking hard. I make, really three dog, I make a three dog uh, joke in episode two or three. <laughs> fucking three dogs, that motherfucker. Anyway, I kept on Enclave Radio just to spite that asshole. We were talking about the uh, radio transmissions and how it's apparently the main character of the book for Homefront is the radio guy because it's called the Voice of Freedom. Yeah. And I said, yeah, so what? Are you telling me we're going to find out it's three dog telling all of this shit or something? That'd be kind of funny. Uh, uh, there's a couple of other games I kind of wanted to go into and just talk about where you, the home front was stealing its inspiration from and not doing it very well, and I had one other, at least one other game that I had in mind for that. Uh. Anyway, thanks for helping me through Ground Zeroes. I'll try it again tomorrow. Oh. I just got to run it back. I'm yeah, getting tempted to do, uh... For color design and atmosphere, I'm kind of tempted to do some footage from Last Light. Have you not? Last Light is is fucking good, dude. Did you the try running? Art direction is amazing. In Last Light. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Try running through Ground Zeroes again, or you're done for the night. I gotta run a change it to 1920. Do what I said. Like just roll on the floor a lot until the cutscene happens. <laughs> 